the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Then God separated the water and the sky. He formed the seas and the land. Then, he covered the land with trees and plants. Then, he filled the world with all the creatures of the sea. of the air. And all the creatures of the ground. And then, he made us. To live in paradise. Until Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate the forbidden fruit. And with one choice, they learned both good and evil. Welcome to one and all to the program God's Point of View. We are so happy to be with you in your homes or wherever you may be. So we say good morning, good evening, good night. Wherever you are in the globe, you're watching us on the World Wide Web, welcome. This evening, we are very excited to bring this program to you. But before we go into the program, I have with me this evening, none other than my friend, Pastor Leslie Johnny of Extending the Borders Ministries. He's going to open us in a word of prayer and then we'll get into the program. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this time that we could look so, into your word as we seek God's truth. We pray as Paul even asks that you'll grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in you. Cause the eyes of our sign to be lightened. That Father, what is discussed will truly be ventilated from your spirit, your direction, from your word, so people's hearts can be encouraged, lives challenged, life transformed. We bless you, Father, and thank you for your presence with us, and even through this community, through, through the areas, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, viewers, we thank you for joining us once again on God's point of view. And what we have begun to do in this season is that we want to go through the books of the Bible one by one. And I'm sure that it's going to take us a while. So we need you to stay with us because you are very important to us having this program because without you, we would have no program. We need you, the viewers. So last week and the week before, we dealt with, we dealt with creation versus evolution. And we tried to answer some of the tough questions. Okay. From <laughs> We learned a lot. We learned a lot. And of course, we understand that because it is God, we will not have the answers to everything. God has kept some of that information for himself and he has the right to do so. However, we trust and we have faith that the information that we do have is sufficient for our salvation. Yes. So from that platform, I have a few questions for Pastor Johnny this evening as we <laughs> go into the whole thing about man and how man came to populate the earth, but we want to start off with some of the questions. Okay. <laughs> and the first question we wanted to ask was, of course, before, after man was made, he had to have an environment. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to ask the question, where exactly was Eden? Right? So we're bouncing off, and, I, and you know I love to read it. Eh? So mm -hmm. I want to just read from, um, I want to read from, Chapter, we're reading Genesis, we are in Genesis chapter 2, yes. and I want to read from verse 7. And it says, 
And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and Eden. And I will read on to, I want to read on down to where it is. Yes, let me, re let me continue. The name of the first, oh, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison or Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is Delium and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. So I will stop there for now. That's a lot of information because I have plenty of questions coming from that. Well, right, so where really, based on the coordinates we have here, mm -hmm. where exactly you could, if, if it is possible to pinpoint where Eden is, can we say is or <laughs> may have been? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, uh, one, one, one can say anything because, I mean, scripture, where scripture is silent, we are silent. Eden can still exist as well as may. I don't know. We have no clear answer for that per se. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have my own perspective on it, but um, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's for a different program. Okay. But um, based on the coordinates that they give to us, um, most theologians, a lot of theologians suspect that it's in the area of Mesopotamia. Area there. Um, and where is Mesopotamia, just for the people who are not so geographically oh, no. savvy? It's uh, somewhere close within the, uh, the African area there, Africa uh, going across that, that element across in Africa, for the, uh, what's the east of Africa, if you want to call it East that. of Africa. Is mm -hmm. it on the continent of Africa? Um, or yes. Or borders? Well, because well, we hear course. about Ethiopia here. Okay, because what happened is that some people believe that they have been shifted in terms of border lines, mm -hmm. uh, Bongji lines. And, and the continent, and, and because the we spoke about that yeah, last week. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, again, Again, that's, that's left up to grabs, whether it's original or what it is now, probably it's left up to grab because there's a place, a possibility that things may have shifted in terms mm -hmm. of things, but most people certainly, yes, it's somewhat in Africa. So the, the place called Havila, mm -hmm. you, you know about it? Um, well, I've heard, I've not really done research on it per se, mm -hmm. but um, of course I've heard about it, but I've done much research on it per se, you know? And the place that is, well, well, he, well these are the push. different rivers. Mm -hmm. And um, the Euphrates, mm -hmm. where that is? Well, of course, you know the Euphrates is that... Because that, 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 we that, know about it in Scripture. Yeah, from Scripture. You know, mm -hmm. it's a very significant river um, that, that flows through Egypt and all those places. Um, so I guess, again, this is a, 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 a Scripture that has challenges. Why? Because, again, if, as we believe that there have been shifts in terms of, uh, like with the flood, when the flood came, oh. and things would have changed. Right, um, right, The right. actual onset of where a river may have started and where it's connect may have changed because of those, those, those elements. So um, it may be further north than we think or further east than we think. So it's possible that some things may have been shifted. What you have just said to me there has really burst like a bulb in my brain because what we are speaking about here is, is, is something bouncing off of what I discussed with, with Pastor last week, mm -hmm. Pastor Cuthbert Gordon, mm -hmm. because we're talking about here now about an old earth mm -hmm. as opposed to a new earth because things definitely would have changed mm -hmm. after the flood. They would have. Yeah, so we are thinking now, mm -hmm. we, are, we are actually using, uh, um, if you want to use triangulating a plate, a place that mm -hmm. would have existed before the flood mm -hmm. and may not exist after, after the flood. After the flood, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Amen, amen, amen. So that was the first question. Mm -hmm. Where was Eden? And we, we basically understand, mm -hmm. given what we see here from the word, that it would have come, it would have, the river that mm -hmm. would have flowed to water the Garden of Eden in Eden would have touched places like Africa mm -hmm. and, e well, mm -hmm. the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. We could see that, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So we're going down to Genesis 2.18. Mm -hmm. 
and one of the questions is it says God said it is not good that man should be alone I will make a help meet for him and he, he made all the animals and everything like that and God I'm going on to 21 and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept mm -hmm. and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man and Adam said this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman <laughs> because she was taken out of man then he says this profound therefore mm -hmm. shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh so first question did God really take a rib I mean all right <laughs> because I think the question is asked based on the fact that um, he said he formed the man out of the dust mm -hmm. but then he formed the woman out of a rib mm -hmm. and that is a that is that is a um, it's an interesting thing to you know it's an interesting point to dwell on mm -hmm. he formed man out of the dust mm -hmm. he spoke things into being but then he took a rib he could have done something differently mm -hmm. Because he could have formed woman just from the dust, just like man. Mm -hmm. But he did something significant there. What are your thoughts on it? Well, of course, um, we understand the whole issue of uh, genetics now. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the concept of the rib, while there is a tussle over it in terms of uh, theology, um, some believe that God did take some construct from man, something from man to be able to build a uh, woman. And, and he did not go back to the dust of the ground per se to construct one, but out of the very uh, genetics, if you want to call it, he mm -hmm. constructed one from, from man's DNA. So the semblance of uh, where scripture talks about um, the woman came from the man yes. uh, creates that issue. And there, that whole issue of when God made, uh, Bible talks about God made man and woman, or he made them. Yes. Um, some people believe that the issue that woman was in man. God made a composite creature. As a result, he took the woman out of the man, separating the genders. Right. So when God made Adam, he was... Woman was already in, in him. him. You understand? Amen, um, amen. Uh, if you, if in terms of the DNA. Yes. So he took yes, it out yes. and just create, separated uh, yes. the, the, the composites so we to have individuals, a man, male man, and female man, if you want to call it. Yes, that. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. I like how you put it because it, it now speaks to the fact that the DNA mm -hmm. was already in the man and God is God mm -hmm. so he just did okay let me take all what I have in him and uh, all right this is the female mm -hmm. and this is the male because he did that with all the animals he made gender with animals he made male I, and female. I, I think I think too in some 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 while this may be a stretch of of one's theological belief mm -hmm. um, in the context of life uh, and we talk about eternity Everything proceeded from God. Right. It came from God. Amen. Amen. God. So God had man. everything in Him. That's right. So God puts man in the earth as a vice or representative of man of Him in of the him. earth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in essence, that which constitutes uh, the worship and the essence of God's kingdom also came from man, just as everything came out from 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 God. So in the earth realm, everything came out from one man. It came from one singular source. So all of us can trace our roots right back to Adam. Um, so I think yes. it's important we understand yes. that particular thing. This is what we spoke thing. about. You know, yes. That's how there's a representation of us, of, of God in man, the capacity that life generates from one single source. And um, one individual, one source perpetuates that life. So we all go straight back to Adam. Just as everything else came out from God. Not that we are gods. I'm not saying that we are gods. Mm -hmm. But in terms of our representation of God in the earth, life as we know it proceeded from one single source from Adam and Eve or Adam and as a result as God so all life proceeded from God and all right let me just go back let's go back a little bit God said let us mm -hmm. make a man in our own image and likeness mm -hmm. in order to create something the image of something there must be the original mm -hmm. So if I am to do a sculpture mm -hmm. of you, I have to have the image mm -hmm. whereby to shape and say, oh, yes, 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 that is really looking like Leslie Johnny Boy. The image and the likeness of it, 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 it is definitely not the original, but what comes forth mm -hmm. of it is, a rep as you say, a representation mm -hmm. 
of the thing, the original thing mm -hmm. that was, you know, first um, existed. Amen. I love it. I love it. So let me ask another question. As God brought woman forth from man, and we, we see down in the, the last verse there, it says, therefore shall a man leave and cleave. Mm -hmm. What is happening there with that cleaving? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> you're asking some challenging questions. No. Uh, no the, <laughs> the, the issue that there's so much um, debate over this particular portion of scripture. Mm -hmm. um, for one, some theologians believe that it wasn't actually God who said it. It was actually placed there by Moses who wrote it mm -hmm. as a, 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 a addendum to um, what it, because he's actually um, given the you know the, the conscript of the whole thing. Um, now, the idea of leaving and cle the cleaving is the idea of again uniting what was once one. Now there's a separation. Is coming back to the original concept of God, mm -hmm. the oneness in terms of man. I made one. I cause a separation in terms of gender issues. The issue of marriage or, or the sexual union within the context of marriage now causes that 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 synchronizing that 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 completing that oneness so we united again. So the idea of cleaving in essence says that it's a it's, it's a it's a bond, it's an unbreakable bond, it's a united it's more than physical, it's, it's more than spiritual. Just, more than physical, yeah. Yes, okay. it's more than physical. Is that spiritual um does the spiritual come about first or is it the 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 the, the sexual act that makes it <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think it's always everything. Everything must start in terms of spirit. Must start in terms of spirit. Okay. Um, there has to be spirit because, um, okay, if we go back to the the whole follow the pattern of God, uh, when God made man, intrinsically, the Bible says um, the author of Genesis went into details to express well, not details, at least give us an overview of how God made man. He breathed breath, breath into man. Into him, yes. The 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 the, 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 way, uh, the breath of God, the the pneuma of God, spirit came into man. Yet the Bible gives us no indication of that transfer when God made woman. True. So it means that somehow whatever God pulled from Adam was a, a, a composite being like was in the sense that there was spirit. Um, so you didn't have to breed another spirit, the same spirit okay. transferred. Right, right, so right. So what, what Adam in seeing Eve wasn't an issue that he saw somebody just looking like himself because she was female. Of course, we understand the gender issues. For mm -hmm. those who understand, probably you've got to look at a biology book. But I see your gender issues True. in terms of her anatomy. Mm -hmm. So when, he's, when he bespeaks, um, she's flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, she is of my very essence. And that's yes. where the rift comes in. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She's just like me in that respect, but she also carries spirit. So the connectivity began first in spirit, which eventually leads to the connectivity back in flesh. You can't start at flesh to get the spirit. Spirit, you have to start at spirit. spirit to go to flesh, yeah. Okay, so in terms of the context of marriage, mm -hmm. well, finding a mate. Let's talk about that. Finding a mate because I wanna shift. I wanna. I wanna go in a little while to talking about wow. <laughs> how the earth was populated. But before we do that, mm -hmm. if we're saying spirit and spirit. When we talk spirit, what are we really saying? Is there, is it a connection that, is it a vibes? It is what, what is happening there? Because, I mean, Adam and Eve were alone. They didn't have any other human beings to deal with. Mm -hmm. Right, so, I mean, two of us together, mm -hmm. right? Nothing happening there. But we know that after that, we had Cain, we had Abel, and they had other children, they had Set and all these other children. Mm -hmm. So, what is, is, is what really happened? Is it that they were spiritually connected or it was just like, well, purpose? <laughs> Man meet woman, <laughs> oh, children. Uh, uh, again, that, that, that's, that's, again, that's the complexity. For me, okay, mm -hmm. when, I, when I read Genesis, I, mm -hmm. I try to look at it from a holistic perspective of the Bible, mm -hmm. where the author is not trying to give you a blow by blow account of everything that happens. Right. It would take volumes to do that day by day. Right. What he tries to do is to give you a, 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 a overview of significant events that 
based on the slant he's going, he's trying to get us uh, basically to that point of Abraham and Israel and the chosen people of God. So he does pinpoints snippets, significant okay. moments, mm -hmm. uh, uh, critical to whatever purpose he's writing. Genesis is written with, a, with an agenda, it's written with a purpose. It's written with a, a, a clear goal in mind, an intent in mind. To and lead us to a place. particular place. So they, okay. they, it shows us the beginnings. And if you deal with the beginnings, you just try to the key beginnings of human history. The, he, the key beginnings of uh, redemption, the key beginnings of, begin of Israel, the key beginnings of God's dealing with man. So Genesis is basically a book of beginnings. Therefore, it is key beginnings that is, is highlighted in the book of Genesis and not everything. I don't think that, um, therefore, when one reads Genesis, some things may not always be in chronological order. Okay. Or some things may not always be listed. But the fact is, um, you deal with that with the buttress of other scriptures to understand Genesis. Exactly. So I am careful uh, in dealing with Genesis where God is silent. I try to stay silent. I don't try to read too much into some things. You know what I because, because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the things that we don't know, they don't, how to put it? We don't know them. We don't know them. Just and leave so it at that. if yes. we dwell on just mm -hmm. debating over things, mm -hmm. debating over these questions that we really will not ever get the answers to except God brings that revelation mm -hmm. and it and of course if he's bringing that revelation it must be that it is needed for that time and season mm -hmm. so I I try my best not to argue Bible with people but there are some things man of God mm -hmm. we must set must straight yeah yeah and we yeah. must we must agree we must put the gauntlet down and say listen because I will tell you, in my early years of Christianity, which is what I'm coming to now, which is then Genesis viewers, we know into Genesis three. First thing I ever heard, right, coming, well, as far as religion is concerned, because we used to go to Sunday school mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I'm talking about a, a, you know, like a biblical thing. Somebody train a word at you and telling you, well, the serpent. He had sex with Eve, mm -hmm. and the sex was the fruit. And you know, that turned me off. Mm -hmm. That really turned me off, because the person who said it was somebody who I believe was a Christian. Mm -hmm. But it was quite evident that this, what that person was saying, was, I wouldn't even call it blasphemy, but it was just plain old foolishness because it really did not add up. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who are quite willing to, gr to run with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would say, show me in the Bible where you see that. Well, well the Bible, the Bible didn't say that, you know. The Bible didn't say that, the Bible wouldn't, the Bible wouldn't say that. I said, but wait. I said, if the Bible mm -hmm. did not say that, then how it right after the fall of man, we call it, mm -hmm. the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife Eve. Mm -hmm. So suddenly before, prior because to... Because had it been that... That's right. But you see, yes, the, the assumption, so the assumption mm -hmm. is, ex ex exact, is exactly foolish. That um, the element of sex was initiated by the devil. Um, you read Genesis very early. God says to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. Populate the earth. Yes. I don't think they're going to populate the earth by thought. Exactly not. And, therefore, and, and, and what did God did was so wonderful. He That's put right. them in the garden, they were naked. Just the very, con just the very mm -hmm. essence of it, it is not good that a man should be, be alone. alone. I will give him a help, help mate. mate. That's right. Um, to me, that signals something very profound. If God just wanted somebody just to count sheep or to name the animals, he could have built anything. He built a woman. He right. built a gender that is created for copulation, for yes. sexual activity, mm -hmm. built um, for a number of things. Therefore, um, to be able to, to say that for me is, is, is folly. At the very onset, when you read Genesis likewise, and you look at the issue of the, what we call the curse, the fall of man, God said to a woman, in sorrow you shall conceive, ma ma um, give birth. So therefore, he did not curse the issue that now that you have fallen, now have sex. He says the issue of your childbirth will be painful. Yes. Therefore, it says to us the issue of childbirth was not supposed to be a painful process prior to the fall. Exactly. Therefore, how can one have childbirth without the issue of sex? Um, one has to understand uh, a, a scripture in the sense that it's based on one's theology. Man is a spirit who has a soul who lives in a body. If you start from the outside going to the spirit, you'll always have problems. 
Um, so as you ask the question about the connect, we connect in spirit first because we are spirit beings. We are spirit beings. Yes. We are spirit beings. We have a soul, we have a, and we live in a body. That is why Hallelujah. we are eventually going to live and face the realities of hell or heaven because there's an eternality in us likewise. Mm -hmm. um, this body now is decayable, it's corruptible, but there's a spirit that is eternal in us. God gave us Ruha, he gave us breath, eternal breath, spirit. So um, that's what happens. Sin broke that spirit connect. That's where we deeply represent God from a place of the spirit. God gave man of himself. The very image is the spirit of God in us. He gave of him very, his very self, the essence of who he is. Though in measured awesome. form, though in measured form, yes. we carry, a man was supposed to carry, uh, essence of God in him, which is the spirit of God, which connects us back to God. If you look at the context of the word man, there's a root word for man which means he who looks upward. Therefore, the idea that God created man is, man is the one who's always looking towards God. He sees God as his ultimate source. He sees God as his fountain. He sees God as his first. He sees God as his prime. He's always looking up to man, looking up to God because God is his everything. Yes. He came from God. And therefore, our, our very makeup suggests that in our very spirits, we're always looking up to God. Uh, David took it. Would I lift my eyes to the hills? No, I'm going to lift my eyes to him who created heaven and earth. There's a place that true manness is he who looks up to God. Sorry to digress your conversation. No, you're going right away. We you go right therefore ahead. must Sorry. understand that element of our manness in terms of our humanness, that connectivity to God. And in fact, a man without God or a man who is not looking up towards God is the man who has sold or depleted or diminished his manhood. So it's not a case where because society feels that manhood is about sexual functionality, it's about uh, a, a man's uh, uh, capacity for sexual activity mm -hmm. against libido. Stress, mm -hmm. libido. That's where we stress on. No, the stressing of man, real man, because when God made Adam from the dust of the ground, he did have a penis, but it wasn't functional unless God breathed spirit into That's him. Right. Mm -hmm. So the element of true functionality starts from the place of spirit. Yes. And therefore, it is not based on libido. Mm. So we stress and we try because of the libido focus of society that the issue of the fruit had to be sex. It was not sex. No. Sex was not the issue per se in terms of that. Uh, the, the, whatever the fruit is, God clouded that in, 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 in secrecy. Yes. Just as Eden is shrouded in secrecy, yes. I'm going to leave that in secrecy. But it could not be sex. No. And I, and I really want our viewers to understand that we need to be careful to what we are listening to. Mm -hmm. You know, as I told a young lady one time, I said, I'll read the Bible for yourself. Mm -hmm. Read it. And ask God while you are reading to give you the understanding of what you are reading. That's the danger, I think, um, Minister Tricia, because people go into scripture with their minds loaded and have preconceived notions. Exactly. And as a result, people establish theologies or belief systems, and they go into scripture to try to corroborate uh, a, a doctrine or belief by taking a portion of scripture, exactly. a verse out of it. You exactly. can't build a doctrine. You can't build a theology based on a verse. Exactly. Scripture, the Bible is a it is seamless reality. And therefore, what it speaks in Genesis, it follows through the entire scripture. Yes. Though it takes on shades and development and progressive revelation, the, the, the consistency of a truth is throughout the entire exactly. scripture. Exactly, amen. So one can pull a single verse and build a truth out of it and build a doctrine. There has to be uh, corrob uh, corroboration from other portions of scripture. So um, the idea that one would stress this and try to pull from some kind of crazy belief that the issue of the food was sex. There is no idea in scripture that suggests that. N none because at all. I say none to at people, all. There's no basis for such, no basis. A, for such a um, because conclusion. Because Jesus Christ, who is the last Adam, came to redeem man, and Bible says any man in Christ is a new creation. Yes. We are recreated in Christ. Then those of us who are saved should stop having sex because sex is the sin, original sin. Therefore, God never stopped it. He never stopped it. Why recreate something new and still allow man to perpetuate the thing that created the problem in the first place? And not only that, if, if, we, if we go to the point of ridiculousness, the DNA of the serpent had to have been in Cain. So Cain is part serpent and part human. Exactly. What exactly. is that? What is that exactly. about? Exactly. It so doesn't make any idea, sense. It doesn't, it doesn't make doesn't, any doesn't sense. Make, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sort. And, we, and, we, we, and viewers, we are saying sense just lightly. 
you know just not not to be frivolous but we are saying it doesn't make any sense because biblically and scripturally there is no evidence there is no basis for such a conclusion all right we see where god is saying that the why the, the eve was deceived mm -hmm. by the words that she heard the serpent said because he mm -hmm. asked her questions mm -hmm. and he spoke mm -hmm. certain things to her in a particular way mm -hmm. now when I was reading the Bible, I recognized something. I, you know, when I was doing this study, God gave the commandment to Adam. Mm -hmm. Eve wasn't formed as yet. Mm -hmm. So she received the commandment from Adam mm -hmm. that God said. Now, Adam wasn't the one deceived, but she probably had doubts. And I'm saying probably because we don't know. Based on what she's saying, because here's what the serpent says. Had God said, yea. He's asking her a question. Mm -hmm. Had God said, but if he shall not eat of the tree of that, every... That's the whole point. Sorry to cut you back. No, the go thing ahead. That we under, um, the thing that needs to be stressed here, mm -hmm. when you look at the word seed in the Bible... Seed. Seed. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus used the illustration of seed. The same concept of the word seed, which is the word of God, because the word of God is seed. Or seed. Um, it's the same word for sperm. Therefore, words, words, a sperm. is a sperm. Mm -hmm. What was the enemy trying to plant in Eve? Doubt. Doubt. Yes. By what? Words. Words, yes. So, yes, there was relation, but it wasn't sex as we know it. No. Was a corrupting of the seed, my mind, mm -hmm. by planting seeds. A sperm of doubt. A sperm of confusion. It wasn't sexual. No. As opposed to thought. So if you could contaminate the spirit, the soul, therefore, that's where the problem is. So once Eve started to listen to words, because words have power, words are seeds. Um, Jesus told the parable of the seed and the sower. And says, if you understand this parable, you understand all parables of the kingdom. He said, the seed is the word of God. Yes. There's power in the word. There's power in the word. All God spoke to create things was what? Words. The word. Yes. God said, let there be. Yeah, the enemy was. comes and he there plants, was. right, and there was. The enemy comes and he says something. What is he trying to do? Plant a seed of doubt. Of doubt. And he's doing the same thing. Exactly. All through, without us having any form of intercourse. That's right. So he wasn't, she wasn't. He's doing the she, same he wasn't, thing. He didn't make her pregnant with Cain. He made exactly. her pregnant with doubt. Exactly. And that Amen. is where the problem Amen. started. Amen. She became impregnated with confusion in her own mind. Yes. Which led to doubts. And as a result, Bible says a man is first... Uh, entice, I mean, he's deceived by his enticement. Deceived, yes. he, it leads to sin, and sin leads to death. Yes. She was deceived in her mind because yes. she allowed herself to become enticed by words. Exactly. That grew out of desire to And even know. that has not changed. And exactly, it's the same problem today. <laughs> that has yes. not changed. That has not changed. I'm a woman, I could tell you, that has not changed. <laughs> All right? So we're speaking here about this whole thing with Eve and the Garden of Eden. Mm. But the Bible says something. It said, no, the serpent... Mm was more subtle. Mm -hmm. And when you hear that word subtle, it says something, he was more cunning. Mm -hmm. It's crafty. He, he, yeah, he knew how to get mm -hmm. to Eve. Mm -hmm. He probably studied her. He probably, you know, was monitoring her. Mm -hmm. He knew that somewhere along the line, he probably saw her mm -hmm. watching the fruit in a kind of daydreaming way. But whatever it is, he was able to reason Mm -hmm. in his mind because when that word subtle comes in it means that there's some form of reasoning taking place and it says he was more subtle than any beast of the field before i came here today i was looking at smile of a child with my daughter and they were showing us how lions operate and they were saying that the lions the female lions are the ones that do the hunting mm -hmm. but what they do they don't hunt alone mm -hmm. they have two sets of lions so there's one that would go to the, they would watch and observe mm -hmm. animals that are grazing. Mm -hmm. And what one would do, one would go around, way ahead mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of the animals that are the grazing. Circle, yeah, circle yes, they will, mm -hmm. but they will go ahead, but one mm -hmm. will stay in the back. Mm -hmm. And the one that is in the back will scare the animals and have them running and scampering. And the one to the front will just take them. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, that is... Thought. Yes, that is Thought. cunning. Because yes. they match out mm -hmm. how we are going to get their prey. Mm -hmm. In the same way, mm -hmm. this, this serpent was able to match out. He mm -hmm. was able to reason. He, well, we call it um, 
instinctively mm -hmm. he was able to say, hmm, I will get her mm -hmm. to eat that fruit. Let mm -hmm. me see how I will go about it. But how mm -hmm. did he go about it? He was inspired or, or he was, how to put it? Let me see what the word says. Right? Of course it was imp and it's there's so a measure of inspired because it's, it's, it what talks about subtlety and talks about that has idea of craft. You build. Yes. You have the ability to build something to achieve a particular an end. And that was subtlety talks about he was crafty. So you're able to build something to be able to effect a desired result. So he was able to build a plan, exactly. a plot. Yes, he came up with a, a plan. He came up with a plot. To be able to deceive And he you. set about to accomplish it. And not only that, he spoke. Mm -hmm. So somewhere along the line, Adam and Eve understood. Well, Eve. <laughs> but yeah, mm. animals, mm. somewhere along the line, we understand that either all the animals could have talked to them or not, or just this one, mm -hmm. because he spoke through, the devil spoke through it, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we understand that there's some speaking took place. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And Eve was able to understand and she was able to follow up mm -hmm. by being deceived. All right, so. You see, again. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the thing about it that I, 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 I look at, and I, I remember one time looking at a program over television, it was a Christian program, and they were arguing on the issue of creation, and really looking at a very scientific um, look at creation. We are trying to function and understand from hindsight. We are trying to figure out what happened with limited knowledge, limited resources. The thing about it, Adam and Eve did not function at the level that we function. No. We use only a small percentage of our brain. They function with the, the full spectrum. Full capacity. Of, of mental, sagacity, emotional, spiritual, every dimension. We have no clue as to what that is. Um, the mind is such a powerful thing where basically people talk about ESP, extrasensory perception, capacity. We do not know if God has had inbuilt in man a capacity to be able to communicate with animals. People True. laugh at what I'm saying. We don't know. True. We don't know the capacity man had. True. So we're trying to figure um, what the vase or the vase look like with a broken piece. Mm -hmm. You can't figure what the vase look like with a broken piece. You're trying to build back something. And therefore we're looking in hindsight and say, I wonder what is based yes. on what we have. So in we, essence, in essence, we mm -hmm. are we are now, mm -hmm. and even for the, the, the theologians of old, mm -hmm. we have been operating from a diminished capacity. A diminished capacity. Because that must be stressed. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That must be Because stressed. even when you look at the lifespan of man, mm -hmm. which is pre the flood, mm -hmm. man lived long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man lived very long. And, and not only that, they started having children when they were old, mm -hmm. which is like, so what he was doing all the time? <laughs> well, again, that's debatable oh. because though the Bible says they started at, like, I don't know, uh, 130. Yes. Again, based on that, it doesn't mean that that's when he started. That's the point that the writer wants to stress a particular birth. Okay. So, I mean, so they um, may have been having children before that. We don't know because, okay, look at the issue. And he hinted he wanted to go there about yes. Cain and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Adam was 130 years old and he begat set. I, I think that's um, chapter 5, I believe. Okay. Um, is it six? Um, yeah, chapter five, verse three. When Adam was 130, he fathered his son his own image and likeness and mm -hmm. named him Seth. So he was 130 when he began, began Seth, Seth. Now, you realize that the writer is key to set up a principle when you study um, Genesis where you talk about the godly line. It must link back the godly line and the ungodly line. Therefore, he has a, 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 a responsibility to come and mention Seth. Now, he does not say that Seth was the third child. We suggest that. Okay. We suggest that. He didn't say they have any child prior to Seth and, 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 and I think he doesn't mention when exactly uh, Cain and Abel were born. True. That's not mentioned. However, he says 130 years he begat from what point we're not sure whether it's from the fall or is 130 years from Adam was being created, we don't know. Nonetheless, he begets Seth, and he says he begets sons and daughters. Now, the Bible doesn't say 
to any of us. No, and he didn't talk about those. That right. set. Right, that set because that is a stress, the godly seed. From the set, you, you flew and you were able to connect. If you look at, I think, in the book of Matthew, how one connects Jesus' um, ancestry's legacy right back to Seth, the godly seed, back to Adam, because the Bible is a, a thread. It's a mm -hmm. seamless thread. So yes, he's right stressing too. that. So it doesn't mention any other child or any other name beside Cain, Abel, and Seth. We don't know of any other. But they begot sons, sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. It doesn't say prior to or it doesn't say before. I understand. So it means that um, nor does it say at all. Now this is a, a, a ticklish story. Nor does it say at all that the first child Adam and Eve had were Cain and Abel. We suggest that. The mm -hmm. Bible says, and Adam knew his wife and she begat a son, uh, Cain. And she bear again, and she got Abel. Some theologians believe that there was no sexual involvement because of the possibility of twins. Okay, so Cain and Abel could have been twins because there's no mention that he knew Eve and then Abel was born. He okay. knew Cain, he knew his wife, and she begat a son, and she bear again. And so it was a case we don't even understand the whole issue of the because, virility Because of when Adam. Cain was cast out, mm -hmm. Cain went and he continued the population over wherever he settled. Good. That's right. So which means basically there were other people in other places. So Right, so that was where that mm. was where I wanted us to really start to look at okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Because I was asked the question before and I couldn't answer and I told mm. them that I would do the research. All right? So Cain and Abel are born. Mm -hmm. We don't know where. Cain went out from the presence of God mm -hmm. and dwelt. And viewers, we asked now in chapter 4, and I just want to bounce from, we know, well, if you don't know the story, Cain slew his brother Abel mm -hmm. because of sacrifice. And we will get back to that at some point in time. But what we really wanted to deal with, we could read from verse 11. No, let's read from verse 10, and it says, And he said, What hast thou done? And this is when Cain had slew his brother Abel. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground, and now art thou cursed from the earth, mm -hmm. which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Mm -hmm. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Now stop here now. So therefore, we're you speaking about peoples, people, peoples of that, course, exist. that exist. That yeah. exists because it can't be that Cain is now going to meet the lady of his life, mm -hmm. and then they have children. And no, so it means that the earth was populated. And I think this is the the burning question everybody have. And I, I mean, you know, sometimes you go to evangelize, and peace, people want to jam you with questions because they know it's difficult. They want to test you. So you're trying to tell me that. All they're trying to tell me, like all they're, all they're trying to tell me that, that it didn't have people on the earth. It had people on the earth. When Cain and Abel was alive, it had people. Where did people come from? You can tell me that. So, viewers, we are just trying to give you the information that is available. All the questions okay. will not be And That's the disclaimer we have to use. <laughs> that all the questions okay. cannot be answered because we only have limited information but man okay. what you go ahead and share with us okay let, let, let me just re 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 reiterate something i said mm -hmm. we are functioning as and i quote you from a place of diminished capacity let's be very real adam had no erectile dysfunctions no fertility functions what exactly in anybody's mind was the potential for adam in terms of uh Production of children. I think it, it. I think it might have been rapid. Okay, good. It, because okay. right now we know. Well, I know of a person. Yeah, she yes. has sixteen children. Good, and we don't live for one hundred and twenty years. Some people no. have 
19, 20 We don't live beyond Good. 105. Not Good. And you, yeah. you, we know people, if you mm -hmm. go back to some of our, our, our fathers, they had yeah. plenty of children. Mm -hmm. um, and not even twins. And not even twins. Yeah. Now, let's look at the reality of this. This is perfect man, perfect woman, apart from the issue of sin, uh, functioning at optimum level. We are yet to understand what level Adam functioned at. In fact, again, this is not necessarily my belief. This is just a simple thought. Someone said, when you read the book of Genesis and you saw that prophet Adam knew his wife, they suggested such was the power of Adam's virility that listen, that while for us only one, one sperm connects to one egg, that may not have been the case with Eve. It could have one sperm, one, one, one encounter, and it could have had multiple pregnancies coming out of it. I don't know, that was just something that someone mentioned. Now, let's look at virility factor. We have today, people have sextuplets, quintuplets, quadruplets, triplets, twins, and even more. Are you saying that the possibility that Eve could have multiple births at the same time? We don't know. She's a mother of creation. The scripture doesn't say anything. Therefore, let's just postulate. If it happens now, it could have happened then. Okay? And the scripture does suggest that. He knew his wife, a child was born, and she bare again, which means that she does... It stops there. Um, if in the case we look at that, we, somebody living 900 years, imagine if the population in terms of the start, Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. sons and daughters, sons and daughters produce sons and daughters and interconnect. You could imagine the fullness of the population of the earth within the space of time. Um, 2,000 years to Noah, Bible talks about the earth was so populated. Look again from Noah post-flood and look up to the time of Jesus' is coming. That's another 2,000 years. The earth populated again. Look at the time from Jesus to now. We have 6 point something billion people in the earth. 7.5. 7.5 billion. Yes. Thank you very much. 0.5 billion people in 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. In just 2,000 years. And, and imagine to, how many would how have many died? died. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So right now, present living, we have over 7.5 billion people yes. living. The countless died in wars, you name it. Mm -hmm. Look how quickly the earth repopulates. So to simply suggest that, uh, ask the question where the people came from, is to misconstrue or to misrepresent the idea of the longevity of life, the virility of these people, uh, we don't know. Who had no steroids to... Disease. That, that, that's right. I'm no, saying that pristine no stress, still, except from no sin. high blood pressure, that's no right. pristine earth. No, 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 pristine earth. So pristine we are saying is. that it's quite possible. It is possible. It's quite possible that childbearing ages would have been earlier. What people fail to understand is this: because um, from minister, the minister, 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 menstruation force begins right. at, at like around Eve 10, never 11, had 12. A problem. Mm -hmm. The point is, Adam and Eve were born big, <laughs> so they didn't have to go through a childhood and childhood. puberty. That's right. Oh, do you know they, that's they an born, interesting point. They were born prepared to perpetuate life. Yes. So while um, Cain and Abel and all those are time to, to grow, grow up, mm -hmm. Adam from day one could have had children. So post the fall, we see a population being established um, and established and established and established and established. And therefore, it is faulty in terms of being honest to scripture to suggest otherwise. The possibility is that there can be population expansion, uh, especially like again pristine conditions. They had no high blood pressure, no cholesterol issues, no problems that we encounter today. Of course, you look at the possible multiple births. With a woman like Eve, how much children could she have had at one time? We don't have a clue. We don't have a clue. We don't have a clue. But you know, something just came to me. I remember when I was small that my grandmother was speaking about um, how the royal family, how they marry cousins and stuff like that. And, and one of the problems de that developed with the intermarrying and, you know, bringing diseases forth the and stuff. diseases mm -hmm. and stuff. But that does not mm -hmm. factor in here because there were no diseases. Exactly. There, there were no conditions. To, no there was to nothing to put, exactly nothing mm -hmm. to perpetuate. Well, say, well, I have this disease, and if I meet with my cousin, mm -hmm. so you know, one of the questions was, so what? So, so God allow incest? Again, mm -hmm. while incest is the idea of close relations, who said that Cain married somebody from his close relation? 
that he went to the, the, the city of the, the, the land Nod, of Nod yeah. and mm -hmm. find somebody in a different place. Uh, why do we suggest was his sister? Why couldn't it have been a very distant relative? Well, well, this is the question. How did it come to be a distant relative? Okay, okay. So because of the population. That's right. Population now, growth. Let me see where he says here. I believe it's five. And Adam lived, and then he, Adam lived 130 years and began, begat a son in his own image. Mm -hmm. This is we reading um, Genesis 5 from verse 3. After his image and called his name Set. And the days of Adam, after he begot, after he had begotten Set, 800 and so. was 800 years. Mm -hmm. And he begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing kind of gaps. Mm -hmm. We're seeing Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Then we're seeing Cain leaving. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing Adam and Eve. If we were to do the family tree, we see Adam, we see Eve. Mm -hmm. Then we see Cain and Abel. Abel has nobody because Abel passed away. Mm -hmm. So then we see Cain, and then Cain goes to the land of Nod and he meets his wife. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go now. Mm -hmm. Then we see 130 years and we see Seth, but then Seth has to grow mm -hmm. to a point of maturity. Here now. Again, what was maturity? We don't know. Exactly. And then we see in Seth, after he had gotten Seth, mm -hmm. Adam lived into 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do here now is that we want to correlate, we want to get a hook in here mm -hmm. of the population expansion. Okay. What I, I, I may not be able to give you all the mathematical uh, permutation where that is concerned, mm -hmm. but this is my simple argument. Now, we understand from scripture, look at Cain's words very carefully. He says, Lord, this is too much for me to bear. You have me like a vagabond all over the earth. And more so, you have removed me from your presence. Right? That's what he says. Yes, in four. In four, in four right? Mm -hmm. um, literally, he was saying, suggesting there was a particular place that um, seemed to still outside the Garden of Eden, still outside of the garden. Yes, because that's the what garden. they're saying here in verse 16 eh, of mm. chapter 4. Mm -hmm. It says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod east, on the east, east of, of Eden. Eden. So we see Eden so, was a place, but a place good. with a garden in the east, east of it. That's right. And here we have no, east, Nod. East, that's right. A east, place named Nod. East of the garden. East. Good. So let's look at it. Hmm. So realize this. So therefore, Adam still dwelt in Eden. But he was in the garden. That's right. Therefore, look at it carefully. Yes. It seemed to suggest that wherever Adam dwelt was still the place of focus. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you understand this was Adam's home. Yes. Therefore, if it was his home, then you understand those who were immediately there would have been immediate family. Yes, yes, Because yes. that's where Cain was. Yes. Now, if Cain is the, if we suggest the oldest child and he leaves home, Home. He's still there. He has to leave home to find a woman. It means, therefore, the woman he found could not be a child of Adam because if he's the oldest and home, why would not the younger one still be home? Yes, yes, yes. And that's something I'm saying to you? Yes. You show me mm -hmm. So, therefore, it seemed to suggest that Adam's, uh, Adam's, if you want to call it city, so, or his, his, his boundaries would have yes. been Eden. That those would have left Eden and gone otherwise, but his immediate family would have stayed in Eden. That would have been common sense, that would have been practical. Yes. That prevented the close intersexual relationship. So he goes quite a nod, east, and he finds somebody. How could this be somebody, Adam? How could he go east to find his sister? If he was so a sister, he would have taken her we are to from the garden there and go with her, he finds her outside. A nod. Nod. If we are to post a question, if we had to pose a question here, who was that person in Nod? How, 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 how did that Nod person mm. come to be? Could it have been a cousin? Could have been a cousin. How distant, we don't know. Again, we have to, again, go with the concept of scripture and guess because we, we like to, we like propaganda, we like the, <laughs> the hype, we suggest it's a near cousin. Who said so? Not necessarily. Um, God said to Adam, be fruitful, and multiply, multiply, and replenish not Eden, replenish the earth. the earth. 
Therefore, you realize that eventually over time, you look at any um, population pattern, there's a concentric issue of movement. There's an inner circle, and people after time start moving out. Yes. They start moving out. And we have no concept of what 800 years alive is like. Is. Exactly. And one person from is just being um, <laughs> arguable. What else did I have to do but to meet children? <laughs> Exactly, and and plant garden, yeah. You know, and they had no current. So they had no TV. Yes, so in the days of our forefathers, we understand why old people had a lot of children because that what else they did? They plant garden, they come in the night. There was no television, no nothing, so they did what was natural. Which might be, but at the same time, again, the virility. We have seen people. I've seen people get pregnant twice in one year. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. By the time the child born, born in a month time, month two months of people have gotten pregnant within a month or two months of the child being yes. born. I mean, Adam is very real. What do you think is going to happen? Again, we can't even begin to conceive the idea of multiple births. So again, people have families and they start growing outward. They grow growing outward. They grow growing outward. They grow growing outward. And the possibility is that um, you look again that he did, Bible did not say he took a wife and left. He went he out. Left, he, left, he left, he left, he went out, and he found a wife. So it means, therefore, he didn't take one of his sisters. It wasn't his sister. He, also taken, he must have had other people there. Mm -hmm. So it had to be those who have filtered beyond the periphery of the... the, the do you believe? Eden. Do you believe that Would 55 minutes have gone already? Oh, Jesus. Viewers, we are thankful for you joining us again here on God's Point of View. Man of God, I am so excited. I just want to continue this topic. So we are going to be continuing again on the um, whole issue and the mysteries of unfolding the book of Genesis. We dealt with creation versus evolution. We're now getting into population growth in the book of Genesis, and we are going to be moving beyond. So I'm going to be inviting the man of God next week. So continue to be blessed, to be a blessing. And as we always say here on God's point of view, we share our opinions, but at the end of the day, it's God's point of view that is important. Thank you so much for joining us, and be good until we see you next time. Bye-bye.